thank you very much for watching this video. In today's video, we are going to look at qualitative research in more detail, focusing specifically on how to critically appraise qualitative studies. Let's take a step back and remind ourselves of the main features of qualitative research. As usual, we will do th this through a research question. And the research question is, what are the experiences of teenagers who access smoking cessation services in primary care? So first of all, what do we notice about this research question? So this research question clearly tells us that the aim, their aim is to reach an understanding of people's experiences or views and feelings. So this question moves away from measuring things uh, typical of quantitative research. For example, a more quantitative question, um, starting from the same problem, would have been, what are the predictors of teenagers' engagement with smoking cessation services? Um, and then this question also uh, makes us maybe understand that the aim of qualitative research is to attempt to make sense of and interpret phenomena. It does not limit itself to observing and recording phenomena. And also qualitative research does not believe that there is an objective truth uh, that we need to arrive at. Even when we interview participants, we accept that we will never be able to arrive to an objective truth, but rather to an interpretation of their experiences, views and feelings as they, the participants, convey them to us. As researchers, we will have our own assumptions and worldview when talking to teenagers. So whatever they tell us, I will be filtered through our beliefs, feelings and views. Before looking at the main qualitative methods, let's address some myths about qualitative research. I've heard a few of these myself. First one, it is less meaningful than quantitative research because the samples are small and so it is not going to change practice. This is not true. A well-conducted qualitative study has the potential of changing, for example, the way a service is delivered. If through, say, interviewing teenagers, that researchers came to realize that the experiences of teenagers smoking cessation services are negative because appointments are offered on Saturday mornings when most teenagers are sleeping in, then service directors could consider offering appointments later in the day, for example. And this would have not been achieved uh, through a questionnaire where researchers had excluded, included a series of prepackaged variables that teenagers could choose from when asked about their experiences. Can you think about any other reasons why talking to teenagers directly might be better to ask a research question compared to a quantitative survey, for example? Another myth, second myth is, Qualitative research is better than quantitative research because it allows for richer and more meaningful data and insights. Again, this is not true because there is no such thing as a better type of research, a better design or a better method in and of itself. It really depends on the research question. If you're unsure uh, on how the research question influences the methods, please go back to and check video two of this video series. Then third myth, uh, nursing research is mostly qualitative because nurses look at things in more in depth than other disciplines. Again, that is not true. <laughs> the research is gonna really depend on the question. So there's no such thing as um, nursing research being mostly quantitative or qualitative. And then my favorite one, qualitative research is easier because there's no complex tasks. Well, I'm afraid that's incorrect too. Qualitative research is not about having a chat with participants and then deciding what they mean and write about it. Qualitative research encompasses rigorous methods that go well beyond having a conversation and then jotting down some ideas. After an interview, it is certainly important to note down the initial reactions and feelings that you might have, but then a more thorough analysis will be necessary. Let's now recap the most common methods in qualitative research. I think the most famous one probably, um, again, is, is interviews. Interviews can be same structured when there is a broad list of questions and topics to be covered. 
with the interviewer prompting the participant and steering them to address their questions. The interview could be unstructured where the interviewer does not ask many prearranged questions and allows the participants to steer the interviewing process. Another method is focus groups where participants are interviewed as a group and data therefore will be generated out of the interactions between participants as opposed to being just the summing up of individual responses. Then there is ethnography where participants are observed in the natural setting to understand in depth their behaviors and beliefs. Then there's also the analysis of written text, for example, diary entries. So what should we pay attention to when we're reading qualitative papers? First, is qualitative the right approach given the research question? This is always the first question you need to ask yourself whenever reading any paper. In addition, ask yourself, is the method they, that has been chosen the most conducive to obtaining meaningful data? If, for example, to answer our research question, we had decided to sit in and observe teenagers' appointments with the smoking cessation services, we might have missed completely the accounts of how teenagers felt or their views, because teenagers are very unlikely to relate how they feel or, or view a service during an appointment with the service itself. So an ethnography, for example, then might not have been the best method uh, in this case. Um, has the researcher reflected on their own perspective, their bias, unconscious or, or not, and how that might have affected them during the research? So imagine, for example, that you are a research in this project, researcher in this project, and at the same time, you are the parent of a teenager who smokes. So how will this impact your way of conducting interviews? How will you be viewing teenagers? Will you be able to detach your personal experience from the participant's experience? And to this last question, the answer is obviously no, you won't be able to detach your personal experience completely. Uh, so always beware of when reading papers and researchers telling you that they were able to be 100% objective when conducted their, conducting their research project. And third, how were data analyzed? So while the point of qualitative research is not to produce uh, statistical models, um, there are still various analysis sites that researchers could choose from and adopt to analyze their data. For example, there is framework analysis, thematic analysis, content analysis, discourse analysis. I sadly cannot get into these types of analysis in this video, but I can tell you that it is important to check whether authors have declared using a specific data analysis method. And then if you want, you can look out for guides that explain the different analysis methods in a student-friendly format. Number four, is this qualitative study attempting to replicate quantitative methods? For example, we might read in a paper, our interviews identified that 90% of teenagers felt the service was doing a good job at addressing fear of peer pressure when quitting smoking. Therefore, we conclude that no changes to the service are necessary. Well, in qualitative research, it's not a matter of the majority of views. In qualitative research, uh, researchers care about the 10% to disagree too. While it is okay to report percentages in qualitative research, the emphasis on interpreting phenomena should not be placed on numbers, but on the experiences as they are related. Similarly, sample size calculations inspired by quantitative research should really not appear in qualitative studies. While it is important that there is consideration on how many teenagers should be interviewed, including diverse teenage, gender, race, and other factors, worrying about rigorous calculations of sample size is unwarranted. This usually occurs because researchers are afraid that their research won't be taken seriously if the sample is not big enough, but actually that is not appropriate in qualitative research. These are some of the pointers around qualitative research. There are certainly many more out there, but hopefully this serves as a good starting point for when you're reading a qualitative paper.
Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank mm -hmm. you.